It's Comics a Great Visual Storytelling Show recorded live every other Wednesday at the Ann Arbor District Library in lovely downtown Ann Arbor, Michigan on the corner of 5th and William, comics.aadl.org. And this is the show where we talk about comics, making comics, uh, reading comics, uh, comics lifestyle. If, if you are in, in any way uh, a fan of the comics medium art form, uh, don't call it genre, uh, then I think the show is for you. And my name is Jersey Droz, cartoonist and teaching artist. And with me today, we have somebody returning to the show. Oh, I, hey, there I am. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Jersey. <laughs> hey, Dave Carter. <laughs> what was you, you? You've been. Uh, you, you have. Had, when was the last time you were on the show? It was, it was, about, it was about a month and a half ago. Okay, so like three, four episodes, yeah, something like that. Yeah, cool. Dave Carter of the uh, University of Michigan Library. Uh, yep. What specific library are you with? I mean, what's the name of it? So I'm at the Art, Architecture, and Engineering Library, which is way up on North Campus. Um, which is, you know, a bus ride away from Central Campus where all the cool things at the university happen, you just don't know about it. <laughs> of course they do. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and you also uh, maintain the video game library Yes, I'm here. the video game archivist, engineering librarian, and I select comics for the library's collection. I don't remember if we talked too much the last time about the video game library because this is super cool. Uh, we, we will have to do that yeah. sometime. Talk about comics and video games and, and all that kind of stuff. Oh, so. for sure. But but I mean but for those who, for, like people who are in Ann Arbor who are watching or people who want to visit Ann Arbor because it is a pretty awesome place for for cartoonists and for art, um, you can go to this library and you can just play video games. Yes, yes. Hidden, a- hidden away in the basement of the Duderstadt Center is the Computer and Video Game Archive, where we have over three thousand video games, over thirty different systems. Um, so I can play Dreamcast. I can, can. <laughs> you can come in and play Dreamcast. We just got set up a Commodore Amiga. Oh my gosh! No way! Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. We're we're old school. So I could do there. I could load Jumpman, comma eight, comma one, there and go to go. town. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So it's it's a true video game archive. It's not just like hey, we got Game Boys and we got oh no no GameCubes. no. We're we're actually serious about this whole whole thing up there. So, but we invite people to come in and and play. And right now, my manager's like, Dave, we don't need more people. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've already got people talking to the chat about moving to Ann Arbor, so you're going to get some more in there. Uh, right. Victoria Coldwin is in here saying, I'm moving to Ann Arbor. That's amazing. Yeah, that is amazing. So, And then there's a comics library at, at the University of Michigan. A small comics collection within, within the larger library. Um, I don't know how many volumes we have. A few thousand. Th- I I don't know. I and should, what what kind I of bo- what, what kind of books are in here? I mean, I, I guess you got Secret Wars too. You yeah, got. Yeah. <laughs> we, we we do have some superhero stuff. We 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 primarily are interested in, um, I, I guess independent comics, art comics, foreign comics, um, that sort of stuff. Stuff that is you know the vision of a particular creator is uh, tour works. Right. That that's sort of our main thrust. But then we also want to support you know comics in general for people. Uh, so we do have some superhero stuff and, you know, some old comics and comic strip collections and uh, manga. We've got we've got a couple ranges of manga uh, hmm. hanging out there on the shelf. So it's um, I t- try to be deep in that one area and then sort of broad and shallow. Um, you do know you work at an educational institution, right? What do you got comics there for anyway? Because people are taking <laughs> classes about comics. Oh, they what a are? great segue. <laughs> oh, look at you. It's like you've been doing like radio we, all your life. Like we play <laughs> <laughs> you, you see this kind of uh, extemporizing that we're doing? It's like, oh man, it almost looks like we know what we're doing. <laughs> uh, but yes, next to Dave, we've got Maggie Ram of Hi. the Dread Pirate Rose dot WordPress dot com. Uh, UVM student. Yep. And uh, taking comics classes at the University of Michigan. Now, I just want to back up just for a second. Comics library, video game library, comics classes at the University of Michigan. I think I rest my case. Case dismissed. Ann Arbor is the town for comics in Michigan, for sure. So, yes, but Maggie, uh, so what kind of classes are you taking at the U of M? Well, um, I am a junior who just transferred into the art school. So right now I am taking a crap ton of art classes and am currently buried under all of that work. I've got yeah. a, I've actually got a 12, well, it's going to be 12 pages. It can be however long you want it to be, but I've got a 12-page comic due on Tuesday <laughs> that hasn't even been fully sketched in yet and i have to ink it and color it all by tuesday so um this will probably be the last time you see me awake and functioning like a normal person would be you know that 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 sounds really rough but at the same time as a as a guy who grew up in like the late 70s early 80s 90s 
uh, how awesome is that to hear that I have, a, I have an assignment due. It's a 12-page comic. comic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I'm not going to get any sleep, but I'm so excited to be doing it as opposed to staying up late and writing a paper. So you're studying under Phoebe Glockner, too, right? Mm-hmm. That's no that's no small shakes. Uh, oh, I was, I'm so excited because when I, when I thought about transferring to the art school, because I was originally in the school of um, LSA here, uh, they, somebody told me, they're like, oh, Phoebe Glockner, she, she's a teacher here. She teaches a comic book class. And I was like, really? And I like ran to the dude or the ugly and I checked out her graphic novels and I like read them immediately. And I was like, okay, I have to take a class with her to see what I can do. And, um, it's, it's, it's one of my favorite classes. All of my comic classes have been my favorite classes at U of M. Phoebe's a bit of a whirlwind when it comes to talking about storytelling, isn't she? Yeah. But, um, I don't know. I feel like I've learned a lot from her. Uh, and it's funny because the first comic class I had, my professor was very, um, very organized and he kind of laid out how everything was supposed to go. Like, um, you know, you use blue pencils first, you know, get a ruler, get all these tools. And Phoebe, it's kind of like, well, just, yeah, do your comic and then, yeah, we'll, we'll work on it. And it's, <laughs> <laughs> it, it's just It's just really funny seeing the different teaching styles, but I've learned a lot from both of them. That's super cool. So uh, were you always into the medium, or is this something you recently discovered? Uh, I knew nothing of comics except Calvin and Hobbes um, before. Uh, That's a good place to start. Yeah, oh. I, I was I was in love with Calvin and Hobbes when I was little, and I collected the books, and my brother's been steadily like giving me more of the books because I only had like three that I read over and over when I was little. And... Um, I I started at U of M as a biology major, and um, I took a comic book class the second semester of my freshman year, and I absolutely loved it. But I had I had no idea about anything about comics before that. And then I took the comic book class, and it was the best thing. I went to Vault of Midnight, and I was you know asking the people like what what should I get? I went to the Ugly because I didn't know that there was the comic book thing at the Dude. And um, you're talking went, about the Duderstadt side, yeah, the Duderstadt yeah. where he works. I went to I went to the Ugly, and I, I <laughs> you're, not, you're not talking about uh, yeah, the uh, dude, <laughs> yeah. <Big> Lebowski, <laughs> yeah. right? The dude, man, <laughs> he's in Ann Arbor too. <laughs> we All the a, reasons you should come. <laughs> we got but, a building called the Dude. If that doesn't bring you up here. That's true. <laughs> and, yeah, again, case dismissed. Yeah, so it, well, you, it's the it's the art and architecture library, but uh, it's also the Duderstadt Center and. Students called the dude, um, <laughs> but yeah, I went to the ugly and there's there's like maybe maybe fifty comic books there, which I all read, which I read them all last summer. And then uh, I get to my comic book class and they're like, oh, by the way, the dude has um, a comic book collection. Uh, we're gonna go visit it now. And I was like, oh, this is gonna be cool. It'll be like another like fifty or so books. And we go up and it's like three shelves that are packed. And I've been visiting it every two <laughs> weeks and checking out um, comic books ever since then so yeah, that, um that was earlier this semester when yeah you at the that? at the beginning of the semester or of this semester phoebe brought us down and was like make sure you check out books and i was i was down there and i've got a problem when i go to libraries that i always check out um more than i can physically carry <laughs> and so i went and i went into the library and i went into the comic book section and like my first thought was okay you already have too much in your backpack. Only only grab what you can carry in your <laughs> arms and can feasibly bring back on the bus. And um, so I had to put down like five books. And then um, I've just been going back ever since. Do is your Has your reading experience changed in any way since taking these classes? Uh, are you finding that uh, there's... A, let me just put it that way. It just it has reading, like even Calvin and Hobbes, has that changed for you since learning all this stuff? It it has changed because I think before when I used to read comics, because um, Calvin and Hobbes and Opus, my dad really loved Opus, the comic strip. I used to just read those and I would think that they were really funny. And I was like, oh, the art's really, you know, beautiful in these. And now I read it and I'm like, oh, you know, Calvin Hobbes is great because he's got this storyline <laughs> that you're not like super sure whether Hobbes is real. And, uh, you know, Opus has changed so much. Since and it's just I, I'm seeing all these different levels to comics that I have before, and I whenever I read a new comic or I find a new web comic online, I you know I'm like analyzing it. And I'm like, okay, so this is good, but you know their storyline, it's they don't exactly know what they're doing, and oh, I love that they do this kind of artwork with this, and it's it's I think I learn more while I'm reading now as opposed to before when it was just kind of in 
uh, you know, a hobby that I really sure, enjoy. Sure, sure. Yeah, and then there's nothing wrong with reading it that way yeah, either, there, right? Yeah, no, there's nothing wrong with reading I mean, I loved my childhood because <laughs> of Calvin and Hobbes, and I think I played Calvin Ball uh, with myself <laughs> slash with my brother as an unsuspecting target once or twice. But um, I, I, I like reading them now, too, because it, it's helping me learn as a comic book artist, and that's just really cool. Well, and the, re- the one of the reasons I bring this up is that I also do classes uh, in the area. Sometimes I wind up teaching non- cartoonist students right so yeah. like i'm teaching adults who this is either like a curiosity or or like i when i did that presentation at the uh, university of michigan high school where i was teaching ui ux designers how comics can be used to uh, b- bolster their skills in their field and you know the question could be leveled at that well you're not making cartoonists out of these people why teach it uh, but my theory is, is that and the reason i asked this question is, is the kid who monkeys with the guitar right the kid who plays the guitar even if he's not dreaming to go beyond the voice or whatever uh, he's gonna buy more music, right? right? Yeah. And so, like, if, if people are reading comics a little and getting a little bit more out of it than even just the pure casual enjoyment of it, and they're like, "Oh, I love how Bill Watterson dropped the panel board on this panel," and yeah. I, I get what he did there. He played a trick on me, you know. Uh, they're probably going to read more comics, right? Right. Oh yeah. So, um, I, I just wanted I wanted to catalog <laughs> that. I wanted to grab that. That you know, like taking a comics class does change the way you know they feel. Yeah. Right? And we have a couple people who are taking the class not uh, not because they're interested in comics at all, but because uh, in the course. Uh, guide it's listed as narrative storytelling and so it's to give you like a skill a better understanding of how to tell a story in a cohesive way so um that's that's what a couple of people have been doing um in the class and it's helped it's helped me um (laughs) make better make better write better (laughs) stories um as well (laughs) i I make better stories it makes it gooder when i put the words in a (laughs) row and yep (laughs) <laughs> All right, so uh, we're going to talk about many comics today. You know, it's high time we got into the topic of, of today's discussion, and uh, I want to frame it. We're going to talk about many comics day, which we promoted when you were mm-hmm. last on, yeah. and we all went and we had a great time, and people were leaping and hugging and all making books. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a party, it's almost like a kegger. <laughs> it kind of well, it almost was. It almost was, but then Phoebe uh, said, "Like, does anybody want to get pizza?" And then everybody kind of went, hmm. yeah. and I was like, "Oh, I thought it was going to be pizza party time." But. Well, the problem is you had a couple of old older people who had uh, jobs and then you had a bunch of college students who were broke and yeah, so true. while we would have loved to have gotten the pizza the, the, uh, the, we were all <laughs> you know the, the six of us who were older people with jobs were like yeah sure that sounds like fun and all the students <laughs> were looking at their shoes <laughs> <laughs> we'd we love we'd love pizza <laughs> A real meal. But, we haven't had one of those in days. But I want I want to frame this discussion before we dive in because mini comics. You know, we've talked about it a lot, both on comics are great and on other things that I've done. Um, I think mini comics are a fascinating medium uh, because it is the entry point. It can be the entry point for the hobbyist, right? You know, like somebody who's like, well, I don't have any aspirations of being a professional cartoonist. I just like making comics. Cool, make mini comics because you can make one in an afternoon and it's just fun and you have that immediate gratification of a finished thing. You know, run to the copy machine, you got a thing. And that's what you did. Yeah. Um, But then then you also have, you know, uh, this... this, what people call the, the boutique mini comics, where they do the screen printed cover, various different formats, um, right? Uh, where in using like you know fancy papers or even fancy binding techniques, like where you'll put uh, like a little band around the bottom of the book, kind of dealy, right? Um, so you know you go to something like an SPX or a Mocha, you're gonna see all of these little like little art books right, right. as mini comics. So. You know, when you think of like the floppy comic, and I can get one. <laughs> and I don't even know, is it cool to call these floppies? I don't know. I just hear people call them that. Like the, the monthly magazine Wh- format. Where did you get that? That's yeah, I don't. <laughs> uh, <laughs> speaking, speaking of the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> Thorian of the new. The, uh, the Amalgam Marvel DC crossover merging. I thing. always carry Amalgam <laughs> books on me. <laughs> always. <laughs> you never know what one of these will save your life. Uh, no, this is. Completely unrelated. It's for, it's for another class that I'm doing. But um, but yeah, when you think of these books, like you, you don't think of these as being in the purview of the hobbyists and the professionals. This is kind of like strictly a professional thing, right? Right. right. But mini comics aren't. It's it's for both, and that's what makes it so interesting and so such a uh, awesome basis to talk about and to keep that in our minds as we're talking about this is that it's for everybody. It's 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 uh, the people's comic format. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, what, what, I'm going to start with a recap of Minicomics Day and see if we can grab some observations out of there. So, what we did, in, so, Minicomics Day, this was our second annual Minicomics Day at the Dude. Uh, we had one last year, because last year, the International Comics Conspiracy had this National Minicomics Day, 
where they were encouraging people to set up these mini comics day throughout the country. And it was supposed to be like 24-hour comics day, but only eight hours, and you do an eight-hour mini comic instead of trying to do a 24-page comic in 24 hours, which we also did that two years ago, and it killed everybody, <laughs> especially me. Because I, was, <laughs> I was the only one who stayed there for all 24 hours because I was like the adult. So right. Like, had, had You're the facilitator. Yeah. Right. And, and, you know, I said, I will... I will probably do that again when I forget how horrible it was. <laughs> <laughs> but then we also did the mini ca- mini comics day, which was eight hours, and so we didn't and we didn't feel the need to feed people there and 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 things like that. So it was a much cheaper affair for us to do. So you know, and we we had maybe ten people show up for that last year. Um, that was good. And then um, this year it was the same day when your class came mm-hmm. um, to the library. And I see all these students like roaming over the comics collection there. And I, I asked one of them, I said, are you guys with the class? And they're like, yeah, we're with Phoebe's class. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then Phoebe showed up and she said, Dave, are you guys going to do the mini comics thing again? And I'm like, well, we hadn't really planned on it because there's no national thing. She, she's like, I would really like to have my students participate in that again. And I said, well, if you're going to encourage your class to come and attend a library event, I'm darn well going to put that on. <laughs> 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 and it's just as easy as reserving a room in there and sending out announcements and doing the publicity. And, you know, uh, publicity was the key thing because, you know, Phoebe said to her students, I don't know what exactly, sh- what did she tell you about it? Uh, she told us that it counted as a class and we had to go. Ah, <laughs> oh, you were drafted. <laughs> there you yeah. go. All right. So yes, if you can get if you can get a university professor to force her students to come, <laughs> that will greatly in- increase the attendance at your event. Uh, but then we also, you know, I came on the show and, and did it and went on the Twitters and the Facebooks and all that kind of stuff. We put yeah. posters around. Um, and so we got... Um, we got more people other than the people who are in your class to show up, um, mm-hmm. which was great because, um, you know, there's a little bit of mixing there and, and, and things like that. So people meeting new cartoonists in the area, sort of getting that sense of collegiality in there. <laughs> and, you know, our, our, you know, hidden m- motivation in this is to get people to give us comics to put in our mini comics collection. Um, right. So, you know, that's that's our reason for putting it on. That's, well... Besides putting on events for the community and stuff like that, and you know, good, yay. But the community yeah. aspect was ostensible. <laughs> <laughs> Our hidden agenda <laughs> is to get free comics for the collection, <laughs> and not only that, but unique comics for the collection. Right. Um, and and Phoebe's like excited about this. She's like, so next year's class, I can like bring them over there and show them those stuff that people did last well, year. Well, that's, that's and ten, twenty years from now, they're going to be in the library, and a hundred years from now, these things are still going to be in the library. And right. I keep moving away from the mic. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and <you're>, <laughs> more. <laughs> <and> more. <laughs> library, library. But, yeah. but, uh, but y- you know, that's that's a great thing about, you know, when I buy a comic for the university's library's collection or get a mini comic or take a donation in and stuff like that, it's going to be there 100 years from now, mm-hmm. and, you know, unless it gets stolen or or torn up or, or thing. Don't yeah, steal <laughs> books from the library. Don't <laughs> drop it in the toilet. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but, 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 you know, we're we're looking... It's different from the public library aspect where, you know, they're trying to buy stuff that people are interested in now. And if nobody checks out a book for five years, it's gone. Mm -hmm. Um, If nobody checks out any of these for five years, it'll still be there 50 years from now. Right, right. And this is going back to, you know, like a lot of talking that I've done for, um, you know, beginning students and and people who I meet online who are, you know, just getting into comics. And they're like, well, where should I start? I've got this 12-volume graphic novel that I want to do. <laughs> and then I say to them, well, no, maybe you should start with a couple mini-comics because uh, you know what's going to happen. You're doing, like, page 15 of your 2,000-page opus, and you're going to realize that, oh, my style's changed. Uh, oh, I'm disheartened because I don't have anything really... Uh, that, that sense of accomplishment isn't there. Like, And the mini-comic is a great way to play a trick on yourself, a motivational trick, because you, you sit down, you do eight hours worth of work, and it's like, I, I got a thing, I got a finished thing, and it's done, and now I can hold it up, and I can show it to my mom, and whatever. Right, right. And putting it in a library is that much of a bigger step of saying, there's my book in a library collection, right? Even, right. even if it is a mini comic, you're in a library now. I mean, that's, that's a huge motivational boost to keep you going, because I'm sure you've run into this, Maggie, there are plenty of opportunities <laughs> in making a comic for us to go, 
oh, I don't even know why I'm doing this. This is garbage. This is no good. And Oh, it, yeah. I, I remember you on Mini Comics Day that uh, I didn't know who you were at this point, but I remember like it was the sixth or so hour, and you're like, I just got to that point where I'm like, oh, crap, this is this is awful. <laughs> <laughs> and it was really funny because the moment you got there was the exact same moment that I got there, and I was just looking, and I was like, oh, God, oh, oh, I don't have time to start over. Okay, I just got to finish it. You just got to muscle <laughs> through, right? Yeah, yeah. And that happens with every project. And if the bigger the project, the more opportunities for that that low point to hit with a mini comic you only got like maybe like page four <laughs> yeah. right page four was the moment where i really began to doubt my value on this planet and then, <laughs> and then, and then page, page eight I, I finished it and then even if it's not the best thing i've ever done i did a thing right and yeah. that's super important to keep yourself motivated as, as, a, as a cartoonist right and that's the thing about the mini comics day or the 24-hour comics day is it's not about producing the best comic that you're ever going to produced it's about producing a comic in eight hours right uh, at eight pages and come hell or high water you are going to finish that thing and you're going to have this thing and it may not be the most wonderful thing in the world but it's done it's done and it's portable yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now here's the funny thing you both finished you know and you know though the, the world rewards production uh <laughs> Uh, Jersey, you kind of finished. I kind of finished, right? It's like I got uh, eight pages penciled, sort of. Uh, but yes, I I failed the mission. Wasn't Mini Comics Day like a month ago, and you hadn't? He, he's a working man. <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, you think you're busy? Wait till you get into the working world. He's got oh, paying don't, gigs. <laughs> don't tell me that. I just had an artist tell me the other day that he still hasn't he still hasn't found time to sleep yet, and that's the one thing I'm looking forward to when I start a <laughs> real life. See, I have an assignment that I'm getting paid for. Where I got to finish a 12 page uh, full color comic in the next like three weeks, and I don't know how the heck I'm going to do it. Yeah, goodbye sleep. <laughs> but yeah, I yeah. So, it. so this is this is like uh, I I started working on like the second level level of pencils. Uh, at a comics event here at the Ann Arbor District Library last Sunday, and this is all I was able to accomplish in the hour that I was there, two hours, whatever. But but yeah, yeah, so I failed. You guys won. Uh, do we want to put some of your works up on the camera? If you put them, like, right there, uh, you just put it flat. flat. Oh, yeah. Okay. And we can put it on camera. Oh, cool. And we can talk about... Oh, I didn't even see that there was a camera up there. <laughs> There's cameras everywhere. This is like the UK. <laughs> <laughs> oh, turn it around. Yeah, you got to flip oh, okay. it. There we go. So, so, okay, you did this in eight hours. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about the story that you put together. Did you know what you um, were going to do when you started? No, and I really wanted to come up with an awesome idea like a few weeks before because Phoebe told us that we were doing this event, and um, I... I I had planned on procrastinating from my other work at some point to come up with a storyline, and that just didn't happen. And so I get there, and all of us had gotten there, and, and nobody had come up with a storyline. So we all kind of meandered over to the comic book box, and we're flipping through there. And uh, uh, the day before, I had seen a, uh, another like miniature comic of an octopus that reached out of the water to grab a, a boat, and accidentally crushed it, and then you see him with a little book that says, like, you know, how to hug. <laughs> and um, so that kind of uh, gave me the idea for this one, and it's just, uh, uh, there's there's a boat, and um, this tentacle comes up. Oh, we slow down there. Hold oh. on. <laughs> You're flipping oh. through as if we, we were familiar with the story okay. here. <laughs> so, tentacle shows up. Boy and girl. across the deck. Or he was supposed to be a boy, but you know, I'm not very good at uh, drawing people. I, well, I, I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm I'm at an obtuse angle here, so I oh. can, I can hardly see it. But yeah, so like two characters at any rate. Yeah, and so tentacles come up, gets the boat, lively. Oh, <laughs> just keep going. And um, you know, shakes the boat, takes the boat under the water. Little little pirate going piss. <laughs> can you say that? Yeah, you can say that. <laughs> <laughs> and then. Uh, Here's the octopus, takes it home to its kid because it was stealing the boat to give it to him to play in the bath. <laughs> oh, so you do a little turnaround at the end. It starts out as being this tragic, monstrous thing, but yeah. but even even monsters have somebody who loves <laughs> them. <laughs> <laughs> Usually they're children. <laughs> Uh, so okay, so you did each page as a panel. Uh, yeah. Now, uh, is that more than eight pages? Uh, no, it's eight, eight. I think it's eight pages. Um, one, two, three, four. Five. Did oh, you? Oh no, it's not eight pages. Yeah, <laughs> How many? It's I think it's twelve. Twelve maybe. pages. No, no, wait, hang on. <laughs> it's sixteen. There we go. Because I did it. Um, the the way that I found to make a mini comic is you take uh, two pieces of paper and you draw on both sides and then you fold it a certain way and then it it's ta da! It's a mini comic. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> 
<laughs> we'll look for your tutorial on that. I do take, <laughs> take this and this, and then there's folding and cutting, and there you go. Uh, but uh, okay, so while you're doing this, I mean that that's that's a lot of stuff to do in eight hours, right? While yeah. you're talking with people, while you're eating donuts, and while you're hanging out, right? <laughs> uh, were were you making these choices? I mean, see, the, one of the other neat things about making comics that I really love is getting lost in that process. I, I think like a really uh, strict deadline, like an eight hours, finish a book in eight hours, is that you don't have time to second guess yourself. You don't have time to think about, well, let me dig into my bag of theory. Right. And right. so this is clearly needs a nine panel grid. I'm going to be very intentional <laughs> about this. Uh, you just you're just trying not to drown. You're just trying to push through and get the thing done. So after the fact, did you look at this and go, hey, that's nice. I'm glad I thought of that. Um, I know I'm asking a difficult thing to, for an artist no, to congratulate no. themselves on the air, but <laughs> <laughs> um, like I, I just knew at the beginning that I didn't want to do um, I didn't want to do anything with people because I know I can still never figure out the whole arm hand sort of thing. It will forever be my trial. So <laughs> um, I was I was glad that I decided to stick with octopuses, octopi, and. Um, I don't. I think it turned out okay. I mean, for for eight hours. People um, in the chat are saying that it's super cute. So, oh, so well, thanks, <laughs> people on the chat. <laughs> <laughs> so you can. Uh, everybody can go to uh, the dreadpiraterose.wordpress.com to read it now. Uh, it will be up there <laughs> eventually. <laughs> Once I get that whole website, I mean, it's got some of my work on there. It's got the first comic I ever did, and. Um, <laughs> yeah, have fun looking at that. Um, <laughs> but uh, it doesn't have this one up there yet. It will be though. Okay. Once I find yeah. that after she finishes free time. her assignment. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. yeah, you got a comic to make. Yeah. Uh, but I want to jump on this thing that you said. Like, you know, you didn't want to do something with people. You want to do something that was fun for you to draw too. Yeah. That's another thing that I think is really important for people to understand is that uh, you know, uh, oh, should I, what should I do? What, what should I write? What should I draw? What should, what should I make that will sell? Right. Well, yeah. forget that stuff. You know, you, you're not gonna have any fun like thinking about it that way. If you just did, you have fun doing that. At least? Oh my gosh, I had so much fun doing this. I mean, uh, there's maybe like 12 people in my class, and um, all of us are very different and have very different comic styles. So it was really nice just to, I don't know if that makes sense, but it was real nice to be locked up in a room <laughs> with them for eight hours and get to know them better. And Co um, comics people are better than other people. Oh. It's okay to say that. <laughs> And, uh, but yeah, I, I, I found, um, I learned a lot about, or my own art style and that, um, <laughs> if I can leave shaving out or shaving, shading out, I'm totally going to. <laughs> and, um, that just having one panel per page is better for my drawing style because I don't know, it's easier for me to make sure all the proportions are right when I only have to worry about one panel one as panel. opposed to having to worry about all these separate panels that I have to have, you know, to correct, you know, sizes or just, you know, things get spaced out easier when you only have one panel <laughs> <laughs> to worry about. It, it, it gave you, well, it, it, another thing that I, I think is really interesting about mini comics too that you're kind of highlighting here, or correct me if I'm wrong, is uh, uh, something I like to say a lot is every comic or every a clean line or if you're, you're going to use just black and white or you use cross hatching what are you going to do uh so diminishing the amount of battles you're going to fight is kind of critical to finishing isn't it yeah you know and 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 what it makes it sound like you're approaching things simply but when you're done it means that there's a cohesion to everything right yeah. so it's like i look at this and i go all the, i see that you uh, stuck with one panel to keep it simple for yourself way to go uh, here's here's a <laughs> here's a yo-yo <laughs> you know <laughs> Uh, but it winds up being this sweet story with like a, a real twist and payoff at yeah. the end. That my yeah. my goal when I started it was I I just really wanted to get the comic done in eight hours. I thought you know if there was <laughs> if there was anything that you know that I could later on have like a fist bump moment about was to say that I actually finished it in eight hours. So that was that was also incorporated into the design elements of it. Here's another thing worth highlighting. I bet you felt like Rocky when you finished that book. Yeah, you? I actually when I went up to go put this in the box where the finished comics were going, I was like, I just want to I just want to spike it into the <laughs> ground. And then he was like, Yeah, probably not the best of ideas. <laughs> you know, and I think and I had because I had to we had to make a couple of copies for our classmates and 
all of my uh, all the rest of like my classmates had ducked out about like 20 minutes early and Phoebe was the only one left and I had to get I had to give one to her and I had to give one to the um, library and so uh, Phoebe was over there like helping me staple and cut it and uh, I was like trying to I was like assembling the pages and she was like do I cut it like this and I was like yeah yeah okay okay we're good we're good and like we got it in 10 minutes before we were supposed to leave and I was I was walking on air for the rest of the day yeah because she, she was the only one <laughs> who actually finished it well there there's one other one other your classmates yeah finished finished Melissa hers, did but we couldn't get the photocopier to do her funky format and get it both sides. Yeah, so. she did. She did a really a, uh, yeah. interesting format yeah, of comics. This, yeah, this off on the, let's see it. On the thing here. Hers is called Cloak and Dagger, and or Blade and Dagger, and hers was one of my favorites of my classmates because you the you way that it, it works. You see it on the screen right there, actually. Oh, cool. Maggie. So there you go. Ah, we got sweet. a cool monitor. So <laughs> okay, so hers <laughs> is called Blade and Dagger, and like this is the cover, and then you'd open it up, and um, it's kind of small, so I don't know if you can see the story, but like. You'd start up here, and then you'd go down, and then you'd flip, flip it. it. Flip it and over, then, yeah. And then that's where the rest of the story is. And I thought it was cool because it ends and begins the same way with the cover of it. And the story is oh. just really... It's like this, this infinite Mobius story. Mobius <laughs> comic, <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, what? Blade and Dagger? Okay. <laughs> 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 but, um, yeah, I, I just really love her art on this because her characters are like these really simple little little fuzzball, puffball kind of guys. But then... um, And she's got this really simple line, and then... Later on, she, they're like, let's go on an adventure. And then all of a sudden, you get this, like, you know, panorama view of these, like, mountains. It's just really beautiful. Oh, dear. Yeah, I don't know if that's going to show up very good on the camera, but uh, you'll have to take our word for it that there's a really awesome establishing shot on yeah. one of those folds. So, yeah, that that is a pretty pretty cool little invention there, this Mobius comic. Yeah, uh, the mini comics, I mean, you can do your standard mini comic, which, you know, here's here's another one that was done. Uh, this is by Ashley Alice, Ash Ashley Alice mm -hmm. uh, for someone who needs it. And this is, I mean, it's great, um, but it's very standard in its format. You know, it's the you flip the pages left to right, and you go and page, and then you get to the back, and it's done. Or you can do a mini comic as a little art project um, yep. like that. Uh, there's another one in here. Uh, this is uh, Mary Claire Harrington's. Uh, oh, that's Mary Claire's? I haven't seen her. Bound comic. with a Brad. Bound with a Brad, and it's this weird abstract art thing. And I'm not even sure how to read this. <laughs> <laughs> but she's got one place, one page is a photocopy of other pages <laughs> <laughs> of the comic. And and then she's got odd shapes in here and things like that. And it's just like, you know, weird and good. <laughs> <laughs> she really likes abstract comics. That's the ones that, or those are the ones that she's been checking out from the dude. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> and there's uh, another one here that's backwards. Uh, that's. Um, Emmy Helford? That one's backwards, but I think it's backwards because she couldn't figure out how to print it right. To be <laughs> honest. I think I think we gave her I think we gave her a hard time for it. We were like, "Were you going for a manga style?" And she was like, "No, I just couldn't get the the pages to be <laughs> formatted the right way." But she she's done things where she's she's photocopied it and pasted the things onto other pieces of paper and put it together, and it's backwards. And if it was an accident or not, it's just. It's happy accident. Happy accident. There, happy there, there, accident. <laughs> that is, I'm a big like, fan like of Like the those. big blob of ink drops on your page, and you're like, oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just have a monster in that panel. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that that, you know, uh, one of the things I love about uh, inking on paper is that very thing, is when, you know, when I'm inking with a crow quill or something, and, like, the line goes zoop, and I'm like, ah, I'm going to get the white out. Hey, you know, right. well, I'm going <laughs> to pretend I did that on purpose. That's yeah. pretty nice. You that's can't hit undo when you're doing it in the real world. <laughs> right, right, and that's something I struggle with. I do also digital inking, and, you know, I have to uh, condition myself to not do that control or command Z, you know, over and over and over again, because I'll just do that all day, you know. Yeah. And it's, it's that whole, like, trying to create the perfect thing, the pristine perfect thing for the ages, and that's not what making many comics is about all the time, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So do you want to talk about yours? I mean, talk about sticking to comfort zones. If anybody knows anything about Dave, if you've seen his <laughs> Ignite talk, uh, the man is kind of a fan of monkeys. <laughs> monkeys make everything better, and that includes comics. Uh, hey, th that was right. For, yeah. Julia Schwartz said it. That, you know. That's right. They Back in the 60s when Julia Schwartz was editing Superman and all those, they if they put a monkey on the comics, circulation would bump 20%. Yep, yep. Didn't matter what uh, what was inside the comic. Monkeys monkey are terrifying, comic. in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> They're they're, they're tiny humans well, and see, they're that, scary. They're, they're, they're <laughs> tiny, hairy children yeah. with super strength. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like Ronald Reagan in a movie, fine. Ronald Reagan in a movie with, with a, a monkey, monkey. awesome. <laughs> right, right. Clint Eastwood in a movie with a monkey, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, 
so so uh, how we got to monkeys in space <laughs> 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 yeah, you brought all the process material too, didn't you? Yeah, so 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 back when we did 24-hour comics day and I'm like, okay, I'm going to do a comic. I have no idea what I'm going to do uh for this comic because I hadn't done I well, I thought I'd never done a comic before. And it turned out as I thought about it that was a lie. I took it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it turned out that was a lie because back when I was in junior high, I used to draw these comics on on you know, notebook paper, the spiral bound notebook paper. I draw comics for my friends, and I drew this comic uh, based on the A Team. And the great thing was, I never saw the t- the television show, the A Team. All I knew about <laughs> it was what was what my friends told me. So it was this it was this once removed stories of the A Team told by a twelve year old. <laughs> 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 so it was Mr. T and you know Face Man and whoever else was in it. And so I thought, okay, that's what I'm going to do for my twenty four hour comic day comic. Um, is I'm going to do the stick figures like I always used to do because I, I, I can't draw. Um, and But I can do stick figures, and I've read enough comics. I should be able to, to put something together. And I'm mm-hmm. going to use these old characters that I used to have. And now they're coming back after 20 years or whatever, and, and they're they're upset because, <laughs> because you know, they're making a movie about the losers, and it's basically the same plot as the A-teams. <laughs> <laughs> so I call them the B-team, you know, just to get around that whole... <laughs> If I'm going to put this online and stuff like that, it's, I'll call it a work of parody. And, oh, there you go. And, You're protected. And yeah. cross my fingers and nobody's going <laughs> to... Mr. T's lawyers aren't going to come after me for, for that. <laughs> and I, and as, as I'm like partway through this comic, I'm like, well, there's got to be a monkey in it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, so I give one of the characters a little monkey pet. And at the end of the 24-hour comics day comic, the, the monkey is made the head of Warniversal Studios... Um, <laughs> because he defeated the big bad guy or whatever, so that's all they reward him. And so a few months later, first mini comics day, I'm like, okay, it'll be a sequel to that. Yeah. And in, in the course of that, the monkeys um, get get into the special effects department, and they get in the cloning machine, and they make a bunch of clones of monkeys. And the B team has to round up all these clones of monkeys, <laughs> but they miss four of them. And at the end of at the end of the second comic, they're like plotting to take over the four monkeys clones that escaped are plotting to take over <laughs> the world. <laughs> See, that's why that's why monkeys scare me. Because <laughs> that's what always <laughs> happens. Planet of the yeah, Apes. That's right. It's I just you always you let loose a monkey and you know shit goes down. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, we're, <laughs> we're watching the. I don't know if you remember the BBC Life television series that came out a few years ago, mm-hmm. nature documentary, mm-hmm. and we were watching it um, on the, on the on the DVD or the Blu-ray, and we got to the last episodes about primates, and they started talking about. How you know monkeys are close to us and they use tools and stuff like that. I've seen. I said I've seen the end of this. It does not end well. For <laughs> us. Oh my gosh! I've seen this one. I've seen yeah. this episode that you're talking about. Is it? Is it the one where they all go like hunting? Yeah, they go like hunting yeah. the other the other baboons, or yeah. they're like going on these war baboon wars and yeah. things like that. And you like monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> there are all these justifications as to why that is a terrible <laughs> idea. <laughs> Right. Uh, we got somebody in the chat here saying uh, that, uh, oh, wait, 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 I'm losing it in the chat. It was a Tony Danza movie, Going Ape with Tony Danza, best movie ever, possibly. I, well, you know, Tony Danza, Tony Danza with a monkey. Yeah. <laughs> Better and than Tony Danza alone. You could do this with anything. You say President Monkey. You know, there pretty you go. good. Uh, Generalissimo Monkey. All right. It's pretty good. That's right. All right. So anyway, so you got your process so, stuff. So, so yeah, I brought my process stuff, and I started... I didn't know what I was going to do until about three days before, and I came up with the idea of monkeys in space. Um, and that's all I had walking into it was the title, Monkeys in Space. And then I had to figure out what I'm going to do about monkeys in space. So I started <laughs> you know, with the cover, and it's just, you know, I just scribbled some monkeys floating around in space like that. Okay, that's not really a plot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I started going on the story, okay, the monkeys have escaped, and the people have to go and find it. And you'll see what I've done here. This is my, my rough outline, and there's panels that I've like covered up because I got about four pages into it and hadn't even gotten started on the plot and I'm like this is only an eight page comic I got to get the monkeys at least to the <laughs> space shuttle <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> have to get space before the so I ended up cutting things up and, and stuff like that so I could s- so what I first did is I laid it out just drawing it in pencil doing some stuff just to make sure that I could fit my whole story that I wanted to do in eight pages mm-hmm and this is like that first like four hours of the day it, it took two to three hours I think okay. to, to do that and because I'm I I'm not an artist, I I don't sweat the drawing. <laughs> <laughs> You're one of the the few rare adults that I've met who actually doesn't sweat the drawing 
and not and you're not uh, a, a cartoonist because I, I can't i i've i've <laughs> i've reconciled the fact that i'm never going to be an artist but <laughs> it's just it's just really funny because a lot of a lot of my friends who were at mini comics they were just like you know getting super involved in the thumbnail process yeah, yeah. it's you you can't do that in eight hours <laughs> <laughs> So then I take this is the this I use a drawing pad that I got at Target. <laughs> oh, that's not archival paper. No, and, the, and you know the and the and, and it's not artboard or anything like that. And you know I tape it down and I get out my pencils. I've got I've got a pencil set, so I've got different hardnesses of pencils. Scoot it up yeah. just a little bit. There we go. Um, and so I drew it out, you know, at this side, one page at a time. Um, and it's pretty much what I did when I was la- when I was laying it out. Looks like a- XKCD. Yeah, it that's, does. That's, 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 that's uh, yes, yeah, it's, uh, it's so nice of you to say. Because <laughs> well. you know his stick. You know, if you look at his stick figures or Matt Fusel's stick figures, it's like th- there is an actual artist behind doing those stick figures. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, in, you know, you've seen Matt Fusel's non-stick figure stuff. Oh, and sure. And yeah. a man can draw. Yeah. And but you know, he's he's sort of taking it down to the stick figure level. Um, as an artistic choice, not my drawing stick figures, which is I can't draw people. <laughs> <laughs> my stick figures don't have faces because I draw faces on them and they look dorky. So um, <laughs> anyway, um, did that out like that, and you'll see I I I cheated. Oh, uh, uh, is yeah. that a cheat? Is that a cheat to use a photo in in your work? So did you cite this later on? No, it's, where you got this image? It's actually a NASA <laughs> image. It's public domain. Oh, okay. oh, oh, well, well played, sir. Well, you're talking to a librarian. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. He knows his that. rights. <laughs> so, so I probably should have in somewhere in there said photos from NASA website <laughs> stuff like that. But I was preaching through this in eight hours. <laughs> right, right. Didn't have time for that. Um, if you see on my on my. Um, my original thumbnails. I actually tried to sketch out. I u- that's what I used for photo reference when I was sketching it out. Okay. And I got to that got to that point in drawing it, and I said, you know, this would probably look be just as fine if I just fo- if I just printed it out. Mm-hmm. So I went in. I went in onto the laptop. You know, I got that picture. I adjusted the color and saturation saturation so it looked less like a f- like an actual photo and more like kind of black and whitish sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And then I got the. Si- it actually probably took me just as long. To get that photo to work out well in there, <laughs> as, as it would have just to draw my crappy drawing <laughs> style on it. So I didn't really save any time, but it was a new technique that I, that I got to employ <laughs> for this. And so I put that in in the comics, and I won't go through the whole story because it's silly. But it's on my website. If you go to yet another comics blog dot blogspot.com. <laughs> And um, you can download and read this in a PDF format or print it out yourself. Cause why would you ever want to do that? But but you could. Um, uh, and I, you see here, <laughs> I, I sort of drew a couple of the characters on to, onto the photograph because I could. Yeah, um, yeah. Integrating into the story. Right, yeah. right. And you know, sort of got to the end. I think I have one halfway decent panel, and that's this top panel on the last page, which which doesn't completely stink. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think you're selling this yourself short because I just read this and this was hilarious. <laughs> Well, and she doesn't even like monkeys. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> That'll be the, the, the pull quote on the back. It's like, I loved it, and I hate <laughs> monkeys. <laughs> Two thumbs way up. I like well, that. And I, you've got right here, it says, it, it says, meanwhile, in Mission Control, the monkeys say we have to launch. And then over here, can't argue with a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, here's the thing, though, is that... You had a lot of different moment choices in that book. Oh, it yeah. wasn't just Ernie and Bert from the shoulders up right, shot, right? right? right. I, I say when I started doing the twenty four hour comics day thing, and I've done so I've done three comics now in my life, so I'm obviously an expert on creating <laughs> comics. <laughs> but I've read comics like like all my life. Yeah, and I just by doing an actual comic, you gain a much greater appreciation mm-hmm. for the th- work and thought that has to go into making. Any, any sort of comic like you like you said all those choices that you have to make where the panels are going to be arranged what's going to happen at the page turn am i going to be close to this or far away from it right if, uh if i put if i angle this in this way in this panel how does that affect the way i read this in this panel right right, right. what's going to be dark and what's going to be light all, yeah. all those all those choices and even creating a a aggressively mediocre comic like i was able to do here <laughs> aggressively <laughs> mediocre <laughs> 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 Sorry, G- gives one th- gives one the um, gives one the appreciation of of what has to go into creating a comic, and I think you next time you read a comic, if you've created one, mm-hmm. um, you will read that comic differently. 
Um, and I think, you know, Maggie, yeah. was, Maggie was saying, you know, she goes back and reads Calvin and Hobbes completely differently from what she did like two years ago. Yeah. Before I, I thought that, you know, I just thought it was a really funny comic. And now I actually did a paper on Bill Watterson for one of my art classes. And um, now I know, like, I, I used to love the Sunday comics because those were the ones that had the full color in it. But then um, I was like, oh, it's so cool because you finally get to see that Bill Watterson is amazing at drawing as opposed to, you know, just just seeing his little Calvin and Hobbes figures. Right. Yeah. But I mean, one of the things that I wanted to jump on that both of you guys talked about, uh, that at least I picked up on it, and you guys can tell me if I'm just uh, being too much of a psychologist's son uh, in, in detecting these things, but you're both talking about uh, picking these battles and drawing what is comes easy to you, right? And I don't know if you've heard this in any of your comics classes yet, Maggie, but like this notion of if you want to be a cartoonist or a professional illustrator, you have to eventually learn how to draw everything, right? I have not heard that. Well, it, it's something that I, I hear get bandied about by professional cartoonists. It's like, you have to be able to draw, like, draw me an oak tree, and you have to be able to do it, you know? like Or at least be able to look at an oak tree and give me something that looks passable as an oak tree. Or draw me a, an old Delta 88. All right, I got to go find some re reference material, but I'll give you that, right? Um, and, and comics are made of drawing, so of course we would think that we have to be able to draw everything. But also, it's like, what you guys are talking about is something that my wife and I uh, discussed and struggled with. We did a mini-comic years ago. Uh, called Dino Love, and it was uh, our tribute to the Jack Kirby romance comics of the 60s, and yeah. and and because she, she loves those books like My Secret Romance and all those, oh things. yeah, they're, they're hysterical, yeah, great stuff. Uh, and they always start with a woman walking in on her man with another woman, and it's and she's in the middle of a sentence, and she's like, oh, I made the the toast that you wanted. <gasps> oh no, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and he's got the woman in her arms, you know. Uh, so we want to do that, but but Anne said to me, she's like, oh man, you know, I hate drawn people. I hate drawn people. I don't know how their bodies work. I don't like drawn faces and whatever and I said well what do you like drawing she says well dinosaurs and I said okay well let's just do that with dinosaurs and it turned out to be uh, one of the projects that I'm more proud of in my oeuvre or whatever the word is for that uh we had to explore some really fun storytelling stuff, and you know, it, it wound up becoming kind of like a curiosity at shows. Because what do you yeah. mean, Dino so Love? Oh, that's yeah. great. But, but but it came out of the fact that she just didn't want to draw something specific, right? And that can be leveraged to your advantage, and if you you know just pick something you like to draw, right? Right. Your well, you wife just became my hero. <laughs> <laughs> just so you know. This is awesome. Is that in the collection yet? If if I not, you can have it. <laughs> We also right. did another one called Rocketosaurus, which was the Apollo 12 mission with dinosaurs. Because uh, <laughs> she's also a big NASA nut. But, um, but you know, the way I see it is if you're drawn for yourself, if you're drawn for fun, draw, yeah. what, draw what you want to draw. There'll be plenty of time for people, if, for if you're going to be a paid working artist, plenty of time for people to tell you what they want to draw mm -hmm. and pay you to do it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and yeah, if you're going to ma be making a living at being an illustrator, uh, then yeah, you got to be able to draw anything that somebody wants to pay you to draw for or you know the money's not going to be there for you yeah. but when you, but when you get a time to do a mini comic pick a pick something you want to do yeah right that's one of the great advantages of doing this is nobody's telling you what to draw right and that and that's where the real creativity can come in because you're you're not you're you're pleasing an audience of one yourself right 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 yeah, yeah. that's that's something i mean i don't i don't have to to do real work except homework yet so if i have to <laughs> if i have to pick to do an art project i always try and do it something uh, do it in a way that i know that i'll enjoy it or do something that i love like i i really love uh the ocean and pirates and i so i decided to do something along those lines and it, you know do something you enjoy if you're going to be spending eight hours on it um yeah uh, especially if it's you know for fun rather than doing a page if, if this was just like a comic of people talking i would that would be the worst eight hours of my life <laughs> <laughs> no but, but and uh, if you do if you do something you love that's going to come through in the work yeah, yeah. and other people are going to love it too right right oh that, that, that is that that uh oh, like it's a kind of an ethereal quality that people pick up on when they see it they can yeah. tell when you're having a good time doing something yeah. but i mean i would say even for people who are working cartoons we got li people who listen to the show who are actually like professional cartoons there, there's some uh i see some award winners in the chat actually yeah. here i am giving oh. advice <laughs> no 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 i used no award-winning comics <laughs> yeah and a u of m comics dude <laughs> no 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 i wasn't trying to discredit anything you guys were saying as 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 an addendum or a, as another track to this whole discussion is uh mini comics can be a great way to sort of be a warm-up exercise 
advertise for yourself. So like when I was working in, you know, my first days of uh, freelance illustration, uh, I would do these little, oh, these are really bad. I'm going to warn you now. Because uh, these are like from way back in 1995. I feel, we can't say that. Just just don't say that. I, pu- <laughs> I put them online. If you do a search for the Black Hole Equation, Jersey Droz, you can read the whole series. I put them on just to, to show people uh, my crude attempts at this stuff. But the whole point of this particular exercise was, let's do a comic in three hours. And I don't even know what I'm going to write about. I'm going to sit down. I'm just going to throw a pencil on paper. I drew it actual size, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, it, what, what it did is it became a fun little diversion for me between big projects. Uh, but it also, it, I, I discovered different storytelling things out of that, like what you guys were talking about, that panic of getting the thing done yeah. fast, yeah. right? So it's, it's, it's serving multiple purposes. One, it's keeping me motivated because I got a finished thing and I have, you know, I finished five issues of this series way back in the day. Uh, but then also I'm learning more about my storytelling chops because I can take more chances on something that I'm not worried about who's <laughs> yeah. going to like it. <laughs> Right, and then and then on top of it, I've got a collection of finished things that I can take to shows. And believe it or not, at one point, I actually had fans of that book. People actually came to that show asking for that book. And when I look at it now, I'm like, oof. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Which just goes to show that there's. <laughs> oh, gosh. So anyway, um, but yeah, yeah. So so it can be something for professional cartoonists as well. And I I don't know if you wanted to do switch over to book recommendations now with our remaining ten minutes or so. Oh yeah, let's 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 go for it. All recommendations. Right. Um, <laughs> okay. Let me grab my bag here. Well, I'll, I'll I'll kick off just some fast ones. Uh, <laughs> here's 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 uh, where I give mini comics a little bit more credibility based on what we were talking about. Roger Langridge, everybody. Oh man, Roger Langridge oh. of HotelFred.com. He does the mini comics, and there's a whole mess of them right there. So uh, what Frankenstein, uh, Spittoon Funnies, Mugwumps Big Night. Uh, you can go to hotelfred.com to find more about Roger Langridge's work. The guy is a, a genius of comics. He is. <laughs> did you bring Bob the DVD series? Awesome. So this just came out yesterday, and it arrived from Amazon, delivered it to my doorstep. Um, Bob the Complete Series from, it was 20 years ago that this came out. This oh, was, my God. This was the series he did after Newhart. Yep. Um, yep. And in the first season, he's a, he's a comic old comic book artist who is, hasn't worked as a as a in the comic books for a long time. He's working at a greeting card company, <laughs> drawing greeting cards. And he gets this phone call saying that the big comics company wants to bring his character Mad Dog back. <laughs> and they'll pay him like tons of money for the rights to do this. Didn't and Jack Kirby appear on this show? I don't know if he did I don't know if he did it or not. I just rewatched the pilot last night. Okay. And so he goes in to to meet to the comic company and he meets with the guy the, the the hot shot young comics creator who wants to turn him into this '90s you know grim and gritty you know he, his his sidekick is dead and his <laughs> <laughs> his 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 love interest is dead bring it up to the '90s, the 90s where sort of everybody sort of was thing. dead and covered in cross hatches yeah <laughs> <laughs> and so the you know the the whole ten- part of the tension of the show is you know he's got this old school '50s '60s way of looking at you know he's Mad Dog is friend. He's he's man's best friend as a superhero sort of sort of thing, uh, versus the grim and gritty Mad Dog. <laughs> <laughs> and but it's it, but it's Bob Newhart do, doing his Bob Newhart shtick just as a comic book artist as opposed to being a, an innkeeper or a, or a psychiatrist. Do you know if uh, Too Close for Comfort is on DVD yet? I do not because that was about a cartoonist oh, as yeah, well. Was. He was like Cat and Cow or something yeah, like he, that, or Cosmic a, Cow with a puppet on his hand. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh drawing God. At home oh, like I love Ted Knight, but that does. Not represent no. our people well, <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, I haven't seen this since it aired. That is awesome that it's on DVD now. So, so Bob, the se- the complete series. I'm sure at a, a store online or <laughs> brick and mortar near you. Uh, Super cool. And then I also brought Kevin Huizenga's uh, stuff. Um, I don't know if I'm. Fam- w- 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 you run this by me again. Who is this? Kevin. Am I pronouncing his name right? Uh, <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> Kevin. H- <laughs> I've always said Huizenga, H U I Z E N G A. Okay, okay. I know his stuff by sight, but I did not know the name. So, okay, okay tell us about these books. So, so these are these are his smaller um, comics that he's had come out. Um, I th- Kevin Huizenga is to me one of the other geniuses working in comics today. He's an experimental formalist mm. in many ways, but it doesn't look. But it doesn't to look use that McLeodian way. Yes. chart language, <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, but it doesn't look that way. And and when when I read his comics, it's sort of like changes my mind about what comics can be, the sorts of ways that he, he approaches things. Um, and it's, it's hard to describe him unless you look at it. And he does stuff in all different formats. These are his, his smaller things. They're, they're actually published by Drawn and Quarterly, so they're not, 
sort of a mini comic in the way we think of you know the handmade kind of thing, but they're small, so that's why I brought them mm-hmm. out here today. He's also his series uh, Ganges, which is in the um, Fanographics published in their Ignatz format, which is the large eight and a half by eleven sort of sort of thing mm-hmm. um, that's been out recently. Uh, two of these, or this one, which is The Wild Kingdom, was reissued as a hardcover. Um, and then Gloriana is coming out as a hardcover as well in, in, a, in a couple months. As um, I mean, really nice looking, you know, twenty dollar hardcover things blowing up. He looked like he's thing. in the same kind of family as like the um, the Seths, the Chester Browns, but then also with a little bit like fifties pop art look to yeah, some of the stuff. A little bit. Um, it's the character that he's got an everyman character that appears in about half the stuff he does. Glenn Ganges, mm-hmm. um, and there'll be there's like the first issue of, of Ganges. Um, it's like the first story in there is Glenn walking to the library. Mm-hmm. And that's basically all, If ostensibly that's all it is. He's walking to the library and he's having these thoughts going through his head. And you get this weird, he starts playing with time in there and mm-hmm. things start, and flashbacks that aren't really flashbacks. And it's like, I get to the end of this five or six page story and you're like, you can represent time in comics completely differently than anybody else has done yeah. before. And every, every time I read something of his, it's like he's done something different with comics. Um, so it's uh, Kevin Huizenga, H-U-I-Z-E-N-G-A. He does all kinds of stuff. We've got some stuff at the library you can come and, and check out and take a look at. Um, I love his stuff. And we'll have a link to his uh, to where you can get his stuff online in the show notes for the for folks who are unfortunate enough to not live in Ann Arbor and going to the, <laughs> and can't go to the dude. <laughs> so... Uh, Maggie, you didn't bring any books for recommendations? I don't think I, t- I mentioned it to you. Um, I don't have any books for recommendations um, on my person, but uh, I, I also am a fan of web comics, and there's a new one out called Little League, um, and it's about, uh, they. it's kind of, I want to say it's 50s style, but I'm kind of bad at placing things, and it's about um, tiny, it's about uh, superheroes as toddlers, so it's got Superman and Batman, as best friends and like Superman and all the other superheroes kind of um, or are, are act like kids would with superpowers. And then Batman just kind of acts like little Batman. And, it's just <laughs> like, and he get, he, there's like one panel where, or there's one strip where he gets sent to time out and he's like, he, he's like, this is, this is the best thing ever. It's the ultimate brooding session. <laughs> and, um, so far it's only on Tumblr, which is kind of unfortunate because it makes it hard to read if you're like following it on like a Google reader or like on, on a Tumblr feed. But I, I, it's really funny, and especially if if you uh, love like Wonder Woman, and I think the the Green Lantern is in there too, and and it's just it's it it's but it's what's been making me laugh in the past few weeks. Little League Comic Tumblr dot com. Thank you, Eric, for p- uh, piping that into the chat. Mm-hmm. Uh, Eric Kloster is is always listening to everything that we're saying, <laughs> 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 giving us the thumbs up. Uh, he listens to everything we say, and he he grabs a corresponding link and pumps it into the chat. That's that's uh, another value add of the live experience. And thank you for that, Eric. Uh, well, cool. Okay. Well, I got another one. This one, uh, gosh, I got a couple from this guy, Ted Seco. Ted Seco. Uh, I'll let you guys. You guys can flip through these, uh, and then we can put them up on the screen. Uh, Ted Seco is a storyboard artist. Uh, he worked on SpongeBob SquarePants, uh, but the guy when he does his own mini comics. He has the most expressive, loose, vibrant, energetic style I've ever seen. And at the same time, it has this dreamlike abstract quality to it. Uh, he's Fusion Man T on Twitter, if anybody wants to go follow him. Uh, he, he is amazing, and he's an incredibly prolific artist. He can belt out one of these things. <laughs> Matt in the production room is saying, please, can we look at it now? Yes, you can. And there it is. Uh, Ted Seco, uh, you can take a look at this, this like just watery inking style. Um and and so like, it's 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 a weird thing where it's got kind of like this noirish feel to it, but then it also has kind of like a '70s Marvel action kind of yeah. pacing yeah. to it. Yeah. But then it's got like this very dreamlike quality in the way he arranges his uh, text in all the pieces too. So uh, I just love his stuff, and uh, he he's a super nice guy to boot. So I recommend people go follow him on Twitter. Another thing that I wanted to bring up that I think would be interesting to consider for f- folks listening at home and for uh, folks who participate at the Duder. Or the dude. Um, <laughs> the dude. Years ago, I used to be involved in a podcast called Art and Story, and one of our co- one of the co-hosts of the show, Kevin Cross of KevinCross.net, started this thing called the Mini Comics Dump Truck. And what it was was um, 
everybody draws a mini comic over the course of X amount of time, right? So like you have a couple months, everybody's busy. Uh, but then everybody basically chips into this club, and when you finish your mini comic, you have to send a copy to everybody else in the club, and everybody in the club has to send one to you. So it's like, and the reason it's called a dump truck is like a big dump truck of comics coming to your door. And th this is one of the ones Ted did for the first round of the mini comics dump truck. And I'm just wondering if like something like that wouldn't fly in. Uh, Ann Arbor with all of these cartooning oh, students. I'd do it. I, I, I've, got, I've, got, um, I've got a couple, or I know of at least one other person that um, I've I've promised, or I've made her promise to go to the next mini comic day with me. So. Oh, super cool. Uh, and it was just, it was fun to get like all the different takes on it. I mean, like, so we got stuff like that, but then we also got, this is from George Ward, uh, The Spy Who Loved Back Bacon, uh, which had a completely different production value to it than, than Ted's stuff. Uh, both in terms of art style and in terms of the way you put it together. Um, let me see if I got any other ones that I can recommend. Here's some, oh, hey, look at this in my pile. I got a Fred the Clown mini comic by Ro Roger Langridge. Um, Jimmy Metal by uh, John O'Ballier of uh, Demophon on the Twitters. There's another one that you can check out. I uh, follow him. And then also, here's another Ann Arbor native. Uh, actually, I, I, wonder, I wonder if you would like this one, Maggie. This is by Stephanie Mannheim of uh, Steph the Artist on Twitter. And she oh. does a series called Nate the Nonconformist, and then she also does Roxy Rage, which is about like a uh, kind of a burnt out, uh, strung out uh, rock musician and all the hijinks that she gets into. And Nate she, the Nonconformist, yeah. She came, did she come to Mini Comics Day? I, I don't think it? she was at this okay. one, this last one. No, she was not at this last one, but she's, she's in New York City now, but she, she hails from Ann Arbor. And she's, she's uh, you could see like a lot of the Peter Bag influence in her work. But uh, she's been on the show a couple times. So, yeah, lots and lots of uh, cool stuff to be found, uh, you know, just from these few recommendations, right? Yeah. So, um, well, we're at, we're at the top of the hour, so we should close out. Uh, thank you guys so much for this discussion. So, uh, Thanks for having us. Dave, anything that you want to promote next? Uh, what's happening next at The Dude? Um, I, I, I said I would promote something that I found out about yesterday. Hang on a second. Oh, is this the, the, the French? Uh, yeah. yeah, I just found out about it myself. Thank you for bringing that up. All right, so the, um, there's a, um, another comics related class here at the university. I got an email about this. Um, so it's um it's a French language class. It's like 200 level French language class and yeah. the cl class is on uh, what's a band dis I can't print say French. So band dessinée. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Um, so th basically they're doing they're talking about French language comics in French, you know, uh, two or three times a week going there and stuff like that. And they're doing something called the Ang Angumish Festival. A sort of their semester wrap up sort of thing where they're giving I don't know if they're giving presentations or poster sessions or, or what's going on there. Um, but it's uh it's what day is it? It's Monday, April sixteenth from four to six PM. It's at yep. North Quad. Twenty four thirty five North Quad. Which is the sort of gallery space right off of State Street um, in the North Quad building. Is it the corner of State and Huron? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um so if I'm I don't know what exactly is going to happen there, but it's about French comics. It's going to be, yeah, as I understand it, it's an exhibition of, of work, but then it's also the students are going to be doing some, hosting some discussions on great. French comics. Uh, so, yeah, I'm super excited about it. I'm going. I've got it on my calendar. I'm looking at it right here. Uh, so any local cartoonists uh, in the area, I told the instructor of that course that uh, I would be bringing some other comics people because these, uh, these kids are not practitioners, but they're very excited about the medium and having yeah. an opportunity to talk with working cartoonists would be super cool. I'm looking at you guys out there watching now. <laughs> come, come, come along, and, uh, and I'll be there. It'll be fun. Uh, and that's uh, the 16th, Monday the 16th, from 4 to 6 p.m. at the North Quad, 2435 North Quad in uh, Ann Arbor, corner of state and Huron. So uh, any, any other ones? When are we doing another mini comics day? Probably <laughs> probably the next time Phoebe has a class. <laughs> uh, she's got a, I know she has a class next semester. It's called Electronic Books, and she's going to be doing book okay. narratives like on an iPad. Oh, okay. Um, so but uh, she might have another comic book class probably like in the a winter year from now. Probably in the winter so. semester. So we'll probably do it next March, um, March 2013. Which, okay. Which, man, sounds like so long. <laughs> it, it sounds like a long time for now. Well, okay. Well, here's a couple things that I can throw out for some plugs because this is something I hope you guys will both participate in is that this summer, from, uh, are you going to be in town this summer? Yes. Okay. Uh, July 7th and 8th. Uh, Kids Read Comics. Kids Read Comics.org is going to be happening at the, at the Ann Arbor District Library. Have you heard of this? I think I think I have. It's a free comics festival that we hold every year in Michigan, and it's free to the public, it's free to table, and every hour we have a hands-on comics workshop led by the guests who come. And we've got Dave Roman and Marina 
Telgemeier coming, Raina Telgemeier of GoRaina.com, Smile, uh, Dave Roman of Astronaut Academy, YayTime.com. Uh, Matt Fazell is going to be there leading his famous uh, How to Make a Mini Comics Workshop, which is super, super fun. Um, but yeah, it's going to be happening for two days at the Ann Arbor District Library. We're going to have a kickoff event Friday night, the 6th. So that's something. But then also, every month, uh, we have the free Comics Artist Forum at the Ann Arbor District Library. Have you guys checked that out yet? I heard about it from you at okay. Mini Comics Day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, the first Sunday of every month, we have a free event where we have a guest speaker come and do a demonstration. I believe the next one, let me go to comics.aadl.org uh, to find out what the, the next one is. I think think it is Gail Williams is going to be doing a demonstration of how to flat, digitally flat your comics. And then, so there's a demo, and then it's just open socializing time and just drawing time and hanging out. Basically like Mini Comics Day without all the pressure. <laughs> 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 Where we can actually have a good time and not, not be full of the ennui of uh, being halfway through a story, right? Right, right. So yeah, that's at comics.aadl.org, anybody locally who's listening or anybody who wants to make a road trip uh, for something fun to do on a weekend. So uh, yeah. Okay, well, then we should give you guys some web credits. So where can we find more information about you, Dave? So I'm on Twitter at Dave Reads Comics. I'm on the blogosphere at yet another comics blog, that blogspot.com. Um, and that's good enough. <laughs> <laughs> Maggie, where can we find you? Well, if you search the, the Dread Pirate Rose, um, that's basically all the websites. <laughs> that's <laughs> the, the login name. And my online portfolio, once I set it up for my sophomore review, is going to be www.wix.com backslash rose ram 319 backslash <laughs> online portfolio <laughs> oh man, that's that's impressive did you get that eric i hope you got it <laughs> for it. we do this at the end of every episode of the poor guy man he needs a raise all right so um yes this this uh, episode will be available at comicsagreat.com slash cag uh, it'll also be available the video podcast will be available at comics.aadl.org uh, so thanks everybody for participating in the chat. Thanks to you guys, uh, Dave and Maggie, for hanging out with me and talking mini comics today. This was super fun. Great, thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. And thanks to the Ann Arbor District Library for hosting this show. Uh, yeah, twice a month. Uh, how cool is that? Uh, the, the dude is pretty cool, but ADL has <laughs> got its own cachet of coolness. <laughs> but is it called the dude? <laughs> <laughs> we'll work on that. You need a good nickname. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so until next time everybody I've been Jersey Joseph comicsagreat.com and Jersey on Twitter okay bye